The biggest mistake you can make as a data analyst is you trying to use the concept of descriptive statistics to make a conclusion from your data set. Just because you plot a bar chart and you can see that one of the variables has the highest bar does not mean there's a difference in profit or there's a difference in quantity. Let me give you a scenario. When I was working on the Superstore data set, a data set I analyzed on my channel like a few weeks ago, uh, it got to a section where I was trying to compare the average discount over three segments, okay? So we have three segments right here. We have the furniture, we have the office supply, and we have the technology segment okay then after plotting my bar chart this was what i have and by taking a straight look at the bar chart, i can be like oh the furniture segment has the highest average discount so that means that the discount for the furniture segment the average discount is different from that of the office and that is different from that of the technology right now what i've done here is that I'm using descriptive statistics to make a conclusion just because I plot a bar chart and I could see that the furniture segment is having the highest uh, average discount does not mean there is a significant difference between the average discount across the three categories. I did the same thing when I was trying to compare profit over region. In fact, I think I saw that one of the regions has the highest profit. Then I concluded by saying, oh, this region is having a profit that is different from other uh, other regions. Okay, now the, the art of us using summary statistics to make conclusion from our data set is a very wrong step now the right thing for us to do is that after summarizing our data set we are supposed to perform a statistical test to test for the difference across the category so in this case i'm supposed to perform a test to test for the difference in average discount across the three categories of furniture office supplies and technology and that is the reason why i'll be making this video because in today's video i'll be teaching you about the concept of hypothesis test why it is very important and how it is being used as a data analyst so without further ado let's get into the video properly <music> So let us start by understanding the concept of hypothesis testing first and the whole of hypothesis test comes from statistical inference okay so we basically have two branches of statistics we have the descriptive statistics which is just that branch of statistics that summarize and describes your data set and we have the inferential statistics aka the statistical inference and this branch of statistics is basically extracting a sample data from population data and using the sample data to make inference on the population to solve problem okay now we basically have two branches of inferential statistics or statistical inference we have what we call the hypothesis testing and we have what we call the confidence interval but for today our attention is focused on hypothesis test now as the name implies it comes from two words hypothesis and testing so let's define the word hypothesis okay now hypothesis is basically an initial guess an initial claim something you just say that can either be right or wrong that is just an hypothesis let's take for example he is guilty that is an hypothesis it doesn't mean he is guilty or he's not guilty but before you can now start saying that yes he is guilty it means you've gone through a lot of tests you've performed a lot of tests and you have enough evidence for you to conclude that that person is guilty so from the statistic standpoint hypothesis is a statement regarding a population parameter a population parameter is any detail that defines a population example include population mean population proportion population size population variance so let's bring the two words together hypothesis testing so hypothesis testing is the act of testing uh, an initial claim about a population parameter so that's just it okay i usually use the concept of the law situation to explain hypothesis test so because whenever it comes to law we have a single sentence that starts the whole thing we have the prosecutor and we have the defendant so the prosecutor is usually oh he is guilty so the prosecutor is starting the whole court of law or the whole case by saying someone is guilty and the defendant is like no he is not guilty now it's now left for the judge to decide whether to accept the prosecutor's claim or accept the defender's claim and for he or she to do that he or she has to go through the evidences that both of them will bring 
across our table or his table and be able to be like oh okay based on this evidence i have seen enough evidence i have seen sufficient evidence to agree with the defendant or to agree with the prosecutor the same thing goes with hypothesis testing in statistics it's just like a law court we have an initial statement we have a statement that counters that initial statement and we leave it to the judge to perform tests and look at evidence and conclude in the long run that this is this and that is that all right so let's talk about the steps in which we have to go through for us to be able to say we've performed hypothesis test when it comes to performing hypothesis test okay we have six steps okay the first step is to state the null and alternative hypothesis so what is the null and alternative hypothesis so the null hypothesis is the initial claim or the initial assertion about the population parameter it can either be right or it can be wrong so we use the letter h subscript not to represent the null hypothesis now the alternative hypothesis is the sentence that goes against the null hypothesis so in this case the null is the prosecutor the alternative is the defendant so let me give you a simple example of how the null and alternative hypothesis simply work so let's say somebody comes to me and say that the average age of students in your university is 25 years now that is a sentence about the population mean age of students in your university or in your school now as a student of that school you can decide not to agree or agree with that statement but that initial sentence that that person make is the null hypothesis and it can be the start of arguments from there down to you know you understand so that sentence is the null hypothesis and you can be like i don't agree with you whatever statement you make after that sentence that counters the initial sentence or the initial statement is what we call the alternative hypothesis so the alternative hypothesis is the sentence that counters that goes against the null hypothesis and we use uh h subscript one to represent the alternative hypothesis now if you think the average age of students in your school is more than 25 or is less than 25 is or is not equal to 25 that is where the second step of hypothesis test comes into the picture determine the direction of the test you see before you perform hypothesis test you must always know the direction of your test and uh, there are basically two directions in which an hypothesis test can follow we have the one tailed test meaning the test has just one direction and we have the two tailed test meaning the test has two direction or we can say the test is bi directional for a one tailed test we can say that the test is uh, right tailed or upper tailed or the test is left tilled or lower tilled let's go back to the example of the average age of students in your university is 25 years if you be like oh i think the average age of students in our school is more than 25 so that means you are saying at least 26 27 and all right there you've 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 given us an alternative hypothesis that is right still that is upper tilled so when the value you are stating against the null is more than the initial sentence then that means you are working with an upper tilled test but if you say that oh the average age of student is lesser than 25 it means you are working with a left tail test or a lower tail test so in summary for a right tail test it is greater than for a left tail test it is lesser than and for bi-directional you are not stating either directions okay you are not saying it is more than or it is lesser than but you are saying it is not equals to so for a bi-directional it means your h1 is that mu is not equals to 25 meaning the average age of students in this school is not 25 it can be more than 25 it can be less than 25 but it is definitely not 25 after you've determined the direction of your test the third step is to choose a level of significance about the level of significance it can be a topic of its own entirely because it's really a big deal when it comes to hypothesis test but i will just make it as simple as possible for you so your level of significance is um a percentage level that can run between zero percent and hundred percent but most times we usually choose between three values that is a ten percent five percent and one percent uh the level of significance is also known as the alpha level and uh, to attach a definition to it it is the probability of committing a type one error this is something that i will still talk about 
in later videos but uh the default alpha level that we use in hypothesis test is five percent now know that the lesser your level of significance the more evidence is needed to test your null hypothesis that is uh, the more accurate your result is going to be so that's why you see that whenever we are performing hypothesis tests in sensitive fields like medical fields and you know some of these fields that any wrong decision will have a huge impact on the lives of so many people we use very very low level of significance okay that is as low as 0.1 percent that's very very low so that aside i don't want to like talk too much on this the fourth step is to perform the test statistics one thing you need to know is that the null and alternative hypothesis it changes it depends on the type of scenario that you find yourself are you testing for mean just a single mean or you are testing for a single proportion or you are testing for two means two proportions or you are testing for three means or you are testing for the relationship between two categorical variables the point i'm trying to make is that your null and alternative hypothesis will always change based on the scenario that you find yourself and that reflects on the test statistics if your null and alternative hypothesis is going to be changing based on several scenarios the test statistics would also change okay so if you find yourself in this scenario in this condition at this place in time you are going to be using these test statistics in fact i have made a video on the several test statistics also known as statistical tests that we have in hypothesis test and the condition that warrants them i'll be linking that video in the top right corner either here or here you can check that out after watching this video it is a very good video so by test statistics or statistical test it simply means you have to do that in respect to your null and alternative hypothesis that means it is a null and alternative that would determine your statistical test or your test statistics now examples of statistical test or test statistics include the z-test for one sample mean uh, the t-test the chi-square the one-way ANOVA the two-way ANOVA the MANOVA the ANCOVA the post hoc test the uh hypothesis test on correlation coefficients just to mention if you there are so much and all of those tests are used based on the conditions that you find yourself based on situations that you find yourself in fact it is based on the null and alternative hypothesis now this is the most important part and that is the step five for you to make your decision now the decision rule is one of the most important thing when it comes to hypothesis tests because this is where you have enough evidence to either uh, reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, when it comes to rejecting or failing to reject the null hypothesis, we have what we call a decision rule. A rule that makes us either reject or fail to reject our null hypothesis. Now, the decision rule makes use of two numbers. It compares this number and decide what happens when one number is more than one number or one is lesser than the number now the decision rule makes use of two values we have the p value and we have the level of significance so i've talked about the level of significance earlier on you know the alpha level now the p value is a probabilistic value that also ranges between zero percent and hundred percent that is zero and one and uh, to make it simpler for you the p value is a chance that uh what you are doing did not occur by chance so the lesser the p-value the more uh accurate you are that is the lesser the chance that whatever you are doing occurred by chance and the more the p-value the less accurate your result is and the more chance that whatever you are doing occurred by luck or by chance i still i'm still going to like make a separate video on the p-value and explain it in depth so our decision rule states that if your p-value is more than the level of significance that is if p is greater than alpha you fail to reject your null hypothesis that is there is no sufficient evidence for you to reject meaning you are going to accept your null hypothesis and that simply means that your test is not significant okay now if your p-value is lesser than the level of significance it means there is sufficient evidence for you to reject the null hypothesis and uh, it simply means that your results that you're working on is very significant okay and as simple as that so it simply means that 
the most important aspect of hypothesis test is the p-value but before you can get your p-value you need to get your test statistics because your test statistics is going to determine your p-value but to get your test statistics you need to know your null and alternative hypothesis you can see that all of them are linked so if you don't have your null and alternative it will be hard to determine your direction and if you can't if you can't determine your direction you can't get your test statistics no test statistics no p-value so they are all linked but the good news is that we have softwares and uh, statistical packages that can help you to calculate your p-value just like that all you need to know is what situation am i finding myself in and what is the right test to use once you know the right test to use the statistical software is going to do the heavy lifting and just provide you with the p-value and once it provides you with the p-value all you have to do is to compare your p-value with your level of significance and reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis and the step c is to make uh, the final conclusion regarding the context of the problem okay now let me use the initial example i used earlier on so i was trying to compare the average discount between three categories okay furniture office supplies and technology so the right test to use in this case is going to be what we call the one way anova okay so the one way anova is a parametric test that we use to test for the mean across at least two groups so it can work with two it can work with three it can work with four so we have three groups here so i'll be using a one way anova to check for the difference in the average discount now i can go to spss i can go to stata and input my data set and perform this test and if i perform this test i'll be looking out for the p value now the null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the average discount across the three categories and the alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference in the average discount across the three categories meaning one of the average discounts for each category or one category rather is different from the order okay and that is that about that so to make my decision i'll be looking at the p-value and if my p-value is greater than five percent or 0.05 it simply means that i'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is sufficient evidence to say that there is no difference between the average discount across the three categories and if my p-value is lesser than 0.05 i'm going to reject our null hypothesis and conclude that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is um a difference in the average discount across the three categories and this is how you can perform hypothesis tests regarding any situation that you find yourself okay i hope i've been able to like make you learn something new today and if you did and you make it to the end of this video please don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel do you feel like i missed something or you have some questions for me please don't hesitate to go down to the comment section and drop your questions i would be willing and ready to attend to all of them thanks for making it to the end of this video if you need to know more about statistical tests when to use them and their corresponding null and alternative uh hypothesis okay i'll be linking a video right here that you can check out uh and if you need a statistical playlist that will help you become a very good data analyst i also have a playlist right here that i'll be linking here it's gonna help you out thanks for making it to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one bye for now